Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to give you some tips on how to base your minis. So, the first thing you're going to need, of course, is your base. Here, I'm using a slightly larger base that is 5 centimeters. For what I'm going to be showing you, you're also going to want a wood chip just a regular old wood chip, and you're also going to want some cork, and this is just an old cork board that I ripped apart a while ago. You're also going to want some Mod Podge, or I think you might be able to get away with just using white glue. You're also going to want some baking soda, a kind of old gammy paintbrush, and I'm also going to be using some static grass, which you can just find on Amazon, as well as some graft tufts. And now with the list of supplies, I almost said ingredients there, we can get started. As you can see me doing here, I start to rip some of the cork off of the cardboard that is attached to, which leaves me with this nice thin little piece of cork. And now I can go take it to my base and start ripping it up. So what we're doing here is we're basically going to create a stone texture. And the reason I'm showing you this technique first is because I think this is going to be the most useful for any fantasy minis that you're going to be working on. It's a great way of adding interest to a base without building it up too much. And that way you don't have your bases just be a ton of static grass or something like that. So as you see me doing here, I take the Mod Podge and start using that as a glue to stick all of these pieces of cork onto my base. And once you have all that glued on, all you have to do is cover it in more Mod Podge. And honestly, that's that. The next tip I want to show you is how to use wood chips, and this is going to be primarily for larger bases, hence the 5 centimeter base that I showed at the beginning of the video. And as you can see, I start by shaving the wood chip to the size that I want it, and then go ahead and cover it in a nice thick layer of Mod Podge. Keeping in mind that I have also washed this wood chip thoroughly before I've done any of this. And I realize now as I'm doing this voiceover that I'm doing this slightly out of order, but before you stick on your wood chip, you're going to need to make a basing medium. And for those of you who don't know, it's basically just some thick goopy stuff that you add to your base to build up areas. And it generally needs to mimic something vaguely looking like dirt. And so what you can see me doing here is mixing up Mod Podge with baking soda to do exactly that. And you're going to mix those together to get something that looks roughly like this. So once you've got your basing medium, you're going to want to apply that to your base now. And I would advise applying it with something like a popsicle stick as opposed to your brush, because even your gammy brush will be practically unusable once it gets the kind of grittiness of the baking soda inside it, particularly when building up these larger areas. For some of the smaller areas, it's not that bad as long as you make sure you wash it with some water or rinse it out immediately after doing so. And then I normally clean off the rim of the base real quick, and then we can go on and add the wood chip that we made earlier. And after we kind of have it where we want it, we can then add more of the basing medium around it to make sure that it looks seamless and like it belongs where we've placed it, as opposed to it just being kind of slapped on. I guess I possibly should have mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but whenever I have too much green stuff, I just take it and I turn it into a pebble or a stone for basing. And so here you can see me applying that into the still wet basing material. And so when you're applying these stones and pebbles, generally I would start with the bigger ones and then you can work your way down into some of the smaller guys, kind of filling in the gaps between the bigger stones that you've put in as well as kind of acting like a gradient into the dirt that is around the rocks. And with that, we have all of the basing actually finished, and now all we have to do is go ahead and paint it. So I go ahead and hit it with my black primer, and now you can really start to tell what this is going to look like now that it's one solid color. So the first paint color that we're going to add is a light gray to all of the rocks. And don't worry about it being a little bit too light because we're going to be adding a fairly thick layer of the wash later. So it'll be a nice dark tone once we've done that. Now you can see I'm actually adding a little bit of yellow into this rock. Rocks are never uniform colors, so adding little yellows and browns while the gray is still wet really makes it look realistic. I then go ahead and add a brown base tone to all of the dirt. I actually end up using a slightly darker, more vibrant brown, but I lost the footage of that so you can see the actual color I'm using right here. 
Once that's finished, I can move on to the wash. Here I'm using Citadel's Agrax Earth Shade, which adds a nice brown to all of the rocks and stones, which makes it look good and natural. And I go over the rocks fairly heavy so that the wash actually stains the surface of it. And once the wash is fully dried, I hit it with a dry brush of a light greenish gray. This helps bring out the highlights as well as ties everything together once we add the static grass later. Making sure not to neglect any area that is stone. And now with that, all of the painting is actually finished and we can move on to adding the static grass. As you can see here, I go in and add the Mod Podge to all the places that I want the grass to be, namely where we've painted in the brown, so that's going to be where the dirt is. And you don't really have to worry about getting in between all of the little rocks that we've done, because static grass basically spreads like glitter, so it'll find its way there eventually. Once you've added all the Mod Podge, you can go ahead and put down a tissue or sheet of paper, and slowly start pouring on the static grass. Longtime hobbyists will know that you're technically supposed to apply static grass with a static grass applier or something, some crazy piece of technology. Me personally, I'm too lazy to look into how that works, and so I just throw a bunch of glue on it and throw a bunch of grass on it, and that's good enough for me. Once you've added all the static grass, you can start tapping it on the table to get all of the excess static grass off. And then I actually take my brush and wipe off any areas that the static grass got to that I didn't want it to go to. Because again, it spreads like glitter. So after this, I actually go ahead and add a layer of super glue over all that static grass. Because otherwise I find that you'll place it somewhere and there'll just be a little bit of static grass every single place you leave it. And then I add another slightly finer layer of static grass over top of that. And then you can finally be finished with the static grass and very carefully take the tissue that you've been using underneath and put that in the garbage. After that, you can start working on some of the detailing, specifically being the grass tufts. And more often than not, I find that I can get away with using one tuft per large base like this. Because something I didn't realize you can do is you can actually just rip these up to make a bunch of smaller tufts. Because you'll honestly notice that if you just add the full tuft onto a miniature, it looks far too big. And if you're just working on a smaller mini, I suggest you save the little graph tufts that you don't use off of the bigger one for other miniatures. And then going ahead to add a little bit of super glue, you can start putting these little grass tufts between rocks and in little crevices, sometimes using a needle as needed. And once you've added all the little grass tufts that your heart desires, I generally touch up some of these shadows, since I went a little heavy on the dry brushing. And last, but certainly not least, you want to add a nice layer of black paint around the rim of your base. It's a small thing, but it makes a world of a difference and it makes your base look super nice and clean. And once you finish that, your base is ready for a miniature. Thank you for watching that video. Hopefully it was able to give you some insights into some techniques on how to base your miniatures and how to create different effects. If you enjoyed that video, please leave a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notified of when I release a video. All that stuff is really, really helpful for a small channel, and I would really appreciate it. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching that video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.